But the world that we live in, our anti-Christian age, disagrees. It believes once gay, always gay, along with a host of other lies. If I had a dollar for how many times some gay Christian told me that my problem is internalized homophobia, I'd be a really wealthy woman. Indeed, five lies of our anti-Christian age have coiled their way from the world to the church. And I have nothing to stand on. I used to believe all of these lies as once. And what are the five lies? Well, we just covered one of them. Homosexuality is normal. The second lie is that pagan spirituality is kind and inclusive. The third lie is that feminism is good for the church and the world. That should get a little something out of you guys. I'll take it. The fourth lie is that transgenderism is normal. And the fifth lie is that modesty for women is outdated and dangerous. These lies which have entered the church and the Christian college have one thing in common. They discourage repentance of sin and they encourage the pride of victimhood. And these lies have a subtle appearance because Satan is a liar who specializes in the persuasive lie of the half truth. Let me give you some examples. Have you ever heard that same-sex attraction is a sinless temptation and only a sin if you act on it? Or that people who experience same-sex attraction are actually gay Christians called to lifelong celibacy? Or that people who experience same-sex attraction rarely if ever change and therefore should never pursue heterosexual marriage? Or that sex and gender are different and that God doesn't care about whether men live as men and women live as women because all you need to do is grow in the fruit of the Spirit as though the fruit of the Holy Spirit can grow from sin. I have heard all of these lies and just in the last year from Christian ministries. And this is where I name names and I'm an English professor so I call this citing my sources. Revoice, Preston Sprinkles Exiles in Babylon conference sponsored by his heretical Center for Faith, Sexuality and Gender and crew. I got the receipts, people. And I have believed these lies too, and not only as a Christian, and I have repented publicly as a Christian in my book to you in articles, and these people can do the same. We don't throw people away, but without repentance, we don't trust them. We trust repentant saints, not just people with flashy ministries. <laughs> Biblical doctrine matters, and it sets the course for your life. Christian compassion for the sinners like the sinner I used to be means walking with them through the gritty battle of hating and fighting sin through the power of Christ and living for righteousness through his Holy Spirit. Christian compassion does not coddle, humanize, or domesticate sin. Christian compassion does not believe that man is more merciful than God. Christians do not encourage sinners to come out as gay or trans in order to be quote unquote missional. This is a mission that leads everybody to hell. And if you are a Christian whose indwelling sin is marked by sexual or gender confusion, I really do get it. I've made that case. But be warned, there is a particular way that empathy with people who sin in the same way that you do works against your sanctification and their salvation. The biblical truth is that homosexuality and transgenderism are found in the flesh, forbidden in the law, and overcome in the Savior. <laughs>